Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about electron configuration. And what you see before you is the periodic table uh, in its widest form. Uh, and I put it in this way just so that you could see the blocks a little better. Usually we have these guys right here underneath the periodic table and it's a little more condensed. But I like the, the wide version when you're doing electron configuration. Now, uh, the reason why I like the wide version is because uh, it shows us our blocks a lot better. Okay, we can see way over here, right there, we have our S block. Okay, and then as we scoot over, right here, we have our F block. Here. Those guys are going to be our D block. And then all the way over here, these guys right here are going to be your B block. Now, you know which block is which if you know how many electrons fit in that sublevel. If we look at the first block, we see that here we only have two electrons, so that's our S block. Uh, S block can only hold two electrons. Here we have the F block, and the F block can hold 14. So here we see we have 14 elements in the F block. And then in D, we have 10 elements, because it can hold 10 electrons. And in the P block, it has six, because it can hold six electrons. Now, one thing we have to remember is that helium way over here he's a part of the S block okay don't forget helium way over there okay guys we're gonna go ahead and what you can see is now that we know the blocks so the S F D and P block we can go ahead and start writing electron configurations now one thing that I have done is I have written four and five right here on F block uh, because the energy levels for F are only in the four, the fourth and fifth energy level. Uh, so here on F block, you always got to think minus two of the row number. Um, on the D block, we do minus one of the row number. So four minus one is three, four, five, and six. Now we don't have to do any math on the S and the P block because those guys, the energy level is just the row number, how it's written. So we just make a few changes for the F block and the D block. Now let's go ahead and write an electron configuration. And we're going to start with a rather small atom. We're going to start with oxygen. Now oxygen has eight electrons total uh, when it is not an ion. So it has eight electrons and we're going to write the electron configuration for oxygen. Now when the periodic table is set up like this and in its wide version, all you really have to do is count until you get to oxygen, which is right here. Now, what I mean by count is I know that for the first thing we have to do is we have to look at the energy level. Now, for the S and P block, it's just the row number. So this would be S. This would be the S block. This would be the energy level would be 1. So 1. This would be S block. So 1, S, and then we count 1 two because remember helium is an S block so we start our electron configuration with 1 S 2 and then we move on here and this is energy levels 2 this is S block so this would be 2 S 1 2 so 2 S 2 and then we keep following that row all the way over and we see we run into the P block it's still the second energy level P block, so 2P, and we count 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're to oxygen, so we finish with 2P4. Now, just to check ourselves, just to make sure we wrote the correct number of electrons, we go back, and remember that these superscripts right there, those are electrons. So, we count 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8, remember oxygen had 8 electrons, so we did it correctly. Okay guys, let's go ahead and do another electron configuration. And this time we're going to do the electron configuration for bromine. Now bromine, we look and see that it has 35 
electrons. Now again, this is just the same. We have our periodic table. We're going to count until we get to bromine. So we know that this is the first energy level, S block. So 1, S, 1, 2. 1, S, 2. Then we come over here and we finish that row. So we go to the next row. We have 2, S, 1, 2. Then we keep following that row. And we run into the P block and we have 2, P, 1, 2. Two, three, four, five, six. We finish that row out, then we go to row three, and we have three S one two. Keep following that row, we run into the P block and we have three P one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we keep going and we run into 4, S, 1, 2. And then we keep going and we hit here. And remember that on our F block and our D block, we always subtract one from the row number. So we're really at 3, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we hit the P block, and remember it's the same as the row number, so it's 4, P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3, P, 5. Now we just got to go back and check and make sure that we have the correct number of electrons. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30, and 30 plus 5 is 35, which we have 35 electrons. So we did it right. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about noble gas notation. Now, as we saw in the last electron configuration, bromine only had 35 electrons, but its electron configuration took up a lot of space. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn a way to shorten electron configuration for larger atoms. Now. What you see before you is the electron configuration for iodine. Iodine has 53 electrons, and this is its electron configuration. Now, to write the electron configuration in noble gas notation, what you first have to do is you have to find the noble gas that is less than your element. So here we have iodine. The noble gas that's less than your element would be Kr, which is krypton, which is 36. Now, one very important thing is that you cannot use any other element besides noble gas because it's noble gas notation. Now, what we can do is we can take krypton because it's less than iodine, and we can put krypton, Kr, in brackets like this. And what this symbolizes is this symbolizes the first 36 electrons because there's 36 electrons in krypton. And that will symbolize the electron configuration for those 36 electrons. So if we look up here, we have 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 36. By writing Kr, we don't have to write this portion of the electron configuration. So we've saved us a lot of space, and we saved us a lot of time. And all we have to do is we found krypton. Now we go to the next element, which 36. What's next? 37. And then we start right there. And we'll have 5s, 1, 2. We'll have 4, remember, because we subtract 1 from the row number for D. So we'll have 4, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then back to the row number 5p, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we made it to iodine. So all we see is from the original electron configuration, we took out the first 36, and then we're left with 5s2, 4d10, and then 5p5. And now this is your noble gas notation.